Hello everyone, it's Daz, and this week's discussion is on worrying about tomorrow. As most of you will know, I just started my first job, although it's considered a year of service, it's in very many ways like being employed. And I wondered how the transition would be from being a full-time student to full-time work doing eight hours a day, 40 hours a week. And what I find about it is that it does take a lot more out of me than I felt when I went to school, even though some of my classes could stress me out. It's not even that I don't like my job or that it's the most difficult job in the world either. But I've come to find that often whenever there's drastic changes in life, for instance, I can even remember the feeling of being 13 years old and starting high school and just feeling like Puberty and the high school culture itself was sucking the life out of me. I can remember the same feeling when I got to college, and it's a very similar feeling here. Is this what life is about? Is it about moving to the next stage and feeling like you lose more and more of your energy? In many ways, I find myself being very sensitive and getting fatigued from a lot of this. And I also find that I can become very competitive about certain things, such as doing the best being the best. And that can be hard because obviously there's always going to be someone better and it's impossible to be great at everything. This is where that whole perfectionism and competition can kick in. And I do feel like that's kind of the spirit of capitalism is competitiveness. And as many things as I like about the free market, there's a lot of things that I don't like about it. Like the fact that many of us work until we retire, pretty much die, and the retirement age is only going up. And I find that often sometimes it can take the fun out of work. It can just make you feel very distant from what you do or less enthusiastic, even when you're doing something amazing. It also just makes you tired to the point where you come home, you don't feel like doing anything except maybe binge watching TV or eating something unhealthy that's convenient to eat, which then starts a cycle of maybe not entertaining yourself with the best of things, but also, eating unhealthy can lead to health issues, which can lead to more medical expenses, and it's a cycle of poverty and exploitation. And I hate to be negative here, but these are just observations I'm making off of things I've seen while working, and then things I've noticed before I worked. And I really hate how this is how the culture runs. The world tells us that we need to care so much about what others think of us, so much about how much better we are than others. We need to worry about every little detail. Bills, bills, bills. What am I going to eat? Where am I going to lay my head? And these are legitimate concerns of survival. But what's really foreign is not worrying about those things, even in the face of not having enough. It's easy to say, don't worry when you're rich or you have lots of resources. It's very odd to say not to worry when you don't have very much. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because of Matthew 6, 25 through 34. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body more than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which is of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which to day is, and to morrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or, What shall we drink? Or, Wherewith shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. For me, that's a bit hard at times to really live out because I can find myself anxious, feeling an existential angst about what I'm going to do about tomorrow. 
But sometimes I just feel the father telling me, Daniela, quit thinking about competing with others. Quit worrying about how well you're doing or what you do or do not have. It's not easy. I find myself having to fight against the way of the world, which is to worry, worry, worry. Worry about tomorrow, worry about next week, worry about 10 years from now, worry about the next hour. It goes back to what I said in another video about casting your cares on him. We do gotta cast our cares on him, but we also need to really seek his kingdom. Part of the beauty and the gift of life is to know God. It's to have a relationship with him. And he doesn't just have a relationship with us and we get nothing in return. Part of what we get in return is not having to worry about tomorrow because he provides for us. It's easy to say have faith and trust him when you got everything, all the resources, you're wealthy, it's easy. What's funny is sometimes people with all of that don't even feel a need to trust him because they say, I have it because I'm awesome or I have it because I worked hard, whatever the case is. But when you learn to trust him without those things, it builds faith. It builds character. It builds a relationship with him. It's not easy, but I really believe this is why we see such high rates of suicide, such high rates of depression and anxiety in the Western hemispheres because so many people are putting all of the weight on themselves. They're chastising themselves for what they lack. And then we have a culture that tells us that if you just buy this, if you just do this, you'll be better. I mean, when you turn on the TV, it's nothing but fear and this is how you can improve if you buy this. Most people don't even have the money to afford it, but some people end up doing it anyways. And then people want to escape this reality with all kinds of escapes, whether it's drugs, whether it's alcohol, whether it's food, whether it's being a shopaholic, or whatever the case is through entertainment. And when you really learn to seek his kingdom and trust him fully, it takes the burden off of you, and it's not easy at first, but it's amazing what comes of it. And I wanted to share this with you not to rant about how horrible the world we live in is, or to make you feel afraid or hopeless, but to bring hope to you. In many ways, this thing that I'm sharing that's on my mind is also a word of encouragement. And I hope many of you have enjoyed this message. I hope you all have a wonderful week. I'll talk to you next Wednesday's video. This coming Monday, there won't be a live chat on Labor Day because I'll be out of town, but I'll talk to you next week. God bless.